This is an overview of the direction-direction intersection computation process. Please take a look at this in your co Coordinate Geometry Fundamentals book. This what that you see on the screen right here is from page 29, and there is a worked example on page 30 and 31, and then on 32 is a practice problem that I'd like to work for you now. To start this process, I have to inverse between the two known points that I have. In this case, I know the coordinates of A and B, and I know the direction from B to C and from A to C, but C is that intersection point and I need to determine its coordinate. So I have to start with kind of an indirect approach and that is I must simply inverse between my two known points. Once I do this, I have formed a triangle. I will have not only the distance from A to B, but I will also have the direction. Once I have the direction of all three sides, we can already see AC and BC. Once I have the direction of AB, then combined with that distance, I can use a sine law solution to find the other sides and thus the coordinate of C. So let's start with step one as spelled out on page 29. If I inverse from A to B, uh, I will get these results. I'm not going to show you the calcs because it just takes more time than you need to use right now. So the distance from A to B is 789.7 and the direction is 93 degrees, 53 minutes, and 16 seconds. That's rounded to the nearest whole second. If you would like an overview of the inverse process, I would recommend you back up to week one and review that process there. So once I have that, I know that this direction is 93, 53, 16. So therefore, I can find the internal angles. So if this is A, and this is B, and this is C, I'm not going to go through the math right now, but you can then do the math and find out that this is 74, 11, 45. This angle is 72, 10, 55. And then this angle is 33, 37, 20. Now this gives us an opportunity to make an important check. All three of those angles should sum up to 180 degrees. If they do not, then you have some kind of math error. So this gives you a place to check your work at an intermediate step. In our case, the sum of the angles does indeed work out to be right on 180 degrees. Okay? So, I also know this direction here, or excuse me, this distance, that is known to be 789.67. Well, if I know the point at A and I know the point at B, then I need to find that coordinate at C. In this case, my shortest side is from B to C. So because I want to minimize the impact of, of rounding or angular rounding and distance rounding, I'm going to use the shorter side. Therefore, I'm going to set this up so that if we call the, sh the side opposite angle C, if we call that side C, then the side that is opposite angle A will also be A, lowercase a. Okay, So I'm going to set up my sine law knowing that C, first of all, you know that the sine law looks like this, correct? 
little c over sine big C equals little a over sine of big A. The large letters are the angular values, and the small letters are the distance values. So here we go. I'm, gonna, I'm going to do the math. It shows 789.67 over the sine of the angle at C. That's the sine of 72, 10, 55. That equals A over the sine of, let's see, that is going to be big A, right? 33, 37, 20. Okay. Well, if I, if I solve, if I solve for A, I will get 459, 28. That is the distance from B to C. Okay? Once I have that, then I am prepared to calculate uh, the difference in northing and difference in, in easting from point B down to point C. You see, I know the coordinate, the northing and easting at B. Therefore, I am simply going to apply the direction that I was given, 199.41.31. That was in our original uh, figure at the top of this page. And then 459.28. Okay, I need to find the corresponding triangle. I'm going to break it into the change in northing and the change in... If that's the case, then the change in northing is going to be a horizontal distance times the cosine of the azimuth. Okay. And the change in easting will be the horizontal distance times the sine of the azimuth. When we are working in an azimuth format here for our angles, then based on the quadrant that the line falls in, we will get positive or negative results for northing, change in northing and change in easting. So let's plug that in. My change in northing is going to be 459.28. Remember, that's the distance A I found on my triangle using sine law, times the cosine of the azimuth of the line from B to C. That is also uh, line small a. That is 1994131. Well, if I crank this out, then I get an answer of negative 432.42. If I do the same thing for my change in easting, notice that the horizontal distance I'm using doesn't change. The only thing that changes here is the trig function. It goes from cosine to sine. Therefore, my change in easting becomes negative 15476. Well, if I think about this, uh, the the two negative values are consistent with the way my picture is drawn. If you remember back from the week one inverse problem, you remember that uh, change in northing, change in easting are positive and positive in the northeast quadrant, and then negative, positive in southeast, negative, negative in southwest, and positive, negative in the northwest. So we have two negative values. We are in the southwest quadrant, and that fits with our drawing. In this case, the drawing was made to scale. So at this point, I'm simply going to apply this data. And if I start with the coordinate at B, that coordinate at B has a northing and an easting. And the northing at B is 8209.45. And the easting was 6668.24. And then I'm going to apply the change in northing that I just computed. 
Well, I'm simply going to add, however, when I apply a negative value, it becomes a net subtraction, doesn't it? So, this is what it looks like. I do the simple arithmetic, and then I find that the northing at C is 7777.03, and the easting is 6513.48. So that is the position of C. If I want to check this independently, I can check uh, my result using the unused leg AC in this case. You see, I, I knew AB from my original inverse. I calculated the length and direction of AC of BC and calculated C relative to B. If I want to verify this, I can calculate C relative to A. And if I come up with the same result, then I know I have done it properly.